I stand at a podium or not? First of all, if you're watching Netflix, yeah, don't, unless you're watching the greatest movie of all time, Dumb and Dumber. Sorry about that. I had to throw in that one. Um, thanks, Jeff. Uh, again, welcome to everybody. Welcome to our in-person. Uh, you know, it's lovely and just fantastic. We, we talk to, I, I, I've talked to many, if not most of you, uh, online at some point, and I'm sure my staff, or you've talked to one of my staff, but it's so nice to have faces to put to the names. Um, I think it, uh, one of the reasons we hold this is, you know, a lot of times there's this enormous barrier between the government and industry or the government and the public. And events like this, I, I think, personalize both sides. So it, it's good to build these relationships and, and we appreciate you guys uh, taking the, making the effort, um, taking the time to come down and see us in lovely suburban Maryland. We arranged for the weather even. We, we've had a we had a really wet, uh, hot, humid September. You'd think it was uh, it was August in September here in Washington area, but now the, the humidity's gone down. The clouds have gone away. We have a nice sunny day here in Maryland. So thank you all for showing up. Uh, and a welcome now to those online. Thank you for to all you folks around the world. I was impressed with the map. If you noticed. There was a little uh, point marked on what I think was the seashells or the island of Mauritius, somewhere out there in the Indian Ocean. So someone's on vacation and still working here. So, because I don't think we have any registered firms out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Uh, but thank you all online, and uh, and thank you for taking the time, whether you're watching this live or or you're going to view it later on from years to come for years to come. Uh, we appreciate uh, you all taking the time to to be proactive in your compliance, and that and that's really the whole point of this is we uh, we want to take the time, or, or we believe it's a good use of our time to spend time with you to help you get your submissions right the first time to answer your questions because it's so much more efficient for us to do that than to try and fix things after the fact or to try and go after you, sorry to use that compliance term there. Um, but uh, our, our goal, as you'll see in my presentation, is, is not to get you. Our goal is to help you. Um, again, thanks to the SBIA team, the Small Business and Industry Assistance uh, Program, Brenda Stoddard and her staff. Um, they've been really uh, just uh, instrument, instrumental and fundamental to all these efforts, and we appreciate their uh, their hard work. I'd also like to give a little shout out to uh, Jeff Kelly and all his folks with Concerted Solutions and their logistics help. Um, it's it's been truly invaluable for us. Okay, so how will this day work? As you can imagine, we'll have a presenter, and then following each presentation, with the exception of my keynote speech. Um, We'll have a Q&A session, and we will take questions from both the live audience here, the in-person folks, and the ones online. Um, I will be in the back um, most of the time. There might be uh, some other Durless folks here uh, helping to triage the questions. Ask whatever question you want, uh, anybody. You can be as specific as you want, especially you folks online. We may paraphrase, we may generalize your question so that it can apply uh, more broadly to, to everyone so that everybody can sort of learn the lesson. Um, and I know with, with uh, what Jeff said, uh, 2,100 people registered online. We can't get to everybody's question. We will not have enough time. We, I'm sure a lot of questions will overlap, um, and we'll try to uh, paraphrase or broaden the questions to answer as many, uh, as many of those questions and to cover as many of those overlapping questions as we can. Um, but uh, please know this, that if your question does not get answered, and you'll hear this, this link over and over again today, feel free to, and please do send that question to edrls at fda.hhs.com. That, that's our, our link to you, and that is uh, your number one source for help. Uh, feel free. We won't be answering it too much today because most of our staff are here, but uh, we will get to those questions, I promise. Um, okay, so following each uh, Q&A session, um, 
uh, or, or at least maybe one or two a pair of presentations and Q&A sessions. We will take a few and occasional breaks, and we will have a break for lunch. Um, during those breaks, uh, I invite all the in-person folks here. Uh, one of the reasons we have our entire staff here at, uh, at the Tommy Douglas Center is to offer you direct and specific assistance. So as we uh, said in the, in the, uh, the marketing of this event, uh, bring, your, bring your submissions to us. If you are having a problem, if you want to, if you want, it is now re-registration period. If you want to register your company today, we can help you get it through. If you want to certify, list your products, certify your products, we can help you today. We have all the technical assistance at our disposal is at your disposal today. So please take advantage of it. Um, our MC for today will not be me. It will be Commander Ray Ford in the back. I'll, uh, I'll let him introduce all the speakers as they come. And uh, we are also happy, we didn't do this last year, uh, but we are happy to offer continuing education credits here. And uh, once, uh, Layla, do you want to do that now? And then I'll get in the keynote. So right now, um, I'm happy to uh, introduce Layla Raju Esfandiari. She's going to explain how the CE credit thing works, and then we'll get on with the day. Thanks, Paul. Um, I've been told that I have to read through this form, so bear with me. Uh, my name is Leila Rajarath Vandiri, and I would like to introduce you to the electronic drug registration and listing using Cedar Direct. Before I introduce um, our moderator, I have a few housekeeping remarks. All faculty are expected to use generic names. If trade names are used, those of several companies should be used rather than only that of a single supporting company. For the unapproved use disclosure, C faculty or speakers are required to disclose to the attendees when products or, uh, or procedures being discussed are off-label or on-labeled, not FDA approved, and any limitations on the information that is presented. Also, our faculty, planning committee members, and CE accreditation team have nothing to disclose. Physicians, pharmacists, nurses, and those claiming non-physician CME participants must attest to their attendance and complete the final activity evaluation via the CE portal, which is ceportal.fda. Gov. For multi-day activities, participants must attest to their attendance and complete the faculty evaluation each day. Final activity evaluation must be complete within two weeks after the activity. Pharmacists will need their NABP e-profile ID number as well as their date of birth in MMDD or month date format to claim CE credit. Important notes regarding completion of evaluations and receiving credit. Attendees have 14 days from the last day of the activity to log in, complete the required evaluations, and attest to your attendance to claim credit. Physicians and nurses may then view print statement of credit. Pharmacists should log into the CPE monitor 10 weeks after the last session of the activity to obtain their CE credit. As for the instructions, you will receive um, an email after the completion of the session, which includes a, a code uh, with the instruction on how to redeem for CE. This email will be sent after the event. And it's worthy to say that the CE credit is only available for in-person atten in attendees. Thank you. Okay. Actually, let me put this back in my jacket. So I don't drop it. Welcome to the Ederlis Workshop. I am Paul Lobach. I am your the director of drug registration and listing here at FDA. So, uh, actually, let me back up here. Um, when asked to do a state of drug registration and listing, I figured it was best to. For those of you who aren't old timers like me, uh, to show you in order to explain where we are now and, and why this is such an important time in drug registration and listing, I want to tell you where we came from. 
Um, so has anybody here ever filled out a Form 2656, 57, 58? I see a couple of hands sheepishly uh, uh, going up there. Um, as you can see, we even, you know, this is the federal government. Everything moves slow here, but we used paper forms right up until 2009. So less than 10 years ago, we were still accepting paper. Um, and what you see there is a uh, 2657. That was the standard drug listing form that was either filled out by somebody at the company or a consultant. And if you were at a large company, you had to fill out hundreds of those in order to list all your company's products. And, and we use those forms, yeah, as you can see, for uh, well over 30 years. Um, and then, but in the 21st century, FDA started to say, hey, you know what, we don't need to do so much paper. We, you know, it's, it's time to move into the 21st century. So we, uh, we got started on, on electronic uh, data or electronic submission, if you will. It was really an online data entry form. And if anybody's used or, or had to register either a food firm or a, or a device firm or submit anything through those systems. Um, uh, the Center for Drugs here had a registration module in FURLs, or the FDA industry systems. And we used that as sort of a pilot, if you will, for about five years, from 2004 to 2009. So you still had to fill out paper for all your drug listings. But you could go online with your account and register your firm online and get it in, get it in immediately. Um, but then 2009 came along, and FDA flipped the switch. We decided, well, it was decided long before then, but to June of 2009 is when it happened. Um, we started accepting only electronic, electronically submitted data. And that electronically submitted data came in the form of structured product labeling, a fancy name for this weird XML file that you couldn't even email to us. You had to get on the FDA portal, um, go through the firewall, and upload it to us. And what you see there is the uh, picture of some XML. I don't even think that's an SPL file there, uh, but it's XML data with the tags. Um, and then the other screen, uh, you, if, in order to view this, whatever tool you use, you have, to, uh, you have to render the file into a usable and viewable uh, format. So this is a view that we use internally. We, if you hear us refer to eDRLS sometimes, eDRLS, that's our internal system that we use in the database. Um, some of you who use DailyMed, NIH, that's a, a different style sheet, a different way of presenting the data. OK. So, but in 2009, as I said, we flipped the switch. But um, you have to remember, it was, it was a sudden switch. And it was new to us, too. Um, some would say we put the cart before the horse because I don't think we were quite prepared for the, the fundamental shift in how things worked and how things were going to operate. So uh, certainly some of our data entry staff, oh, I should say prior to that, because we still had, we were still getting thousands and thousands of paper submissions, tens of thousands of paper submissions prior to that. We had a, a very large but unfortunately shrinking data entry staff at the time. Um, we were able to hold on to some of them and transition them to regulatory experts. We were able, able to hold on to some of them, transition them into SPL experts and process experts. And uh, of course, many, and all, actually I'm proud to say I think my entire staff are a little bit of both. Um, Similar to you guys out there who were operating in the paper world along with us, um, we had to learn a new way of thinking, a new way of organizing the data in our heads, and, and a new way of, of submitting the data, and a new way of retrieving it and reporting it out, too. Um, and that, that took a little bit of time. But once we learned, we, we decided to start helping you guys. All right, now that we know our business, it's time to help you guys know and so about that time, um, we, we, uh, for those of you who've ever gone through leadership development, it's always good to start with a vision and a mission and value statement for your program. So 
this is what, what was developed for Duralist. Our vision, and, and the, what, again, this slide is the reason we are here today. We, we are not out to get you guys. We are not out necessarily to go after the bad guys, although sometimes that's a part of our job. Our goal, our vision the, on the horizon is a complete and accurate drug registration and listing database, period. That's what we want, 100%. If we can get a 100% complete, 100% accurate, we have done our job. And uh, in order to accomplish that, we change the focus of drug registration and listing. Even though we are still in the Office of Compliance, um, our mission morphed a little bit. And it was to enable industry to submit a complete and accurate registration and listing. Um, and then to give that data out to all those who need it. Once we had quality data to, to disseminate, um, we needed to find ways to get that data out to folks. And, and the values to support that are we, we became a customer service organization. And you guys are just one of many of our different types of customers out there. Industry, obviously, you, uh, you're the biggest customer in, in terms of getting the data in. Um, but we have a lot of users of our data, as most of you are well aware. Um, there's other FDA offices, other government agencies use this data. The healthcare providers use this data. The, uh, the healthcare payers use this data. Academia uh, uses this data in their research. Um, and the general public, people are learning about what the NDC number is. People are learning about what drug companies do. And they're paying a little more attention today with all the information that's out there. Um, but again, to all that effort that we do to help. Um, that bottom line there is, is important here. Um, we want to be proactive. We want to be collaborative with you. Um, but we are still firm in our commitment to making sure things are right and making sure you guys do right. And, and we will do what it takes to make, uh, make companies uh, comply with this kind of uh, uh, obscure but very important regulation for registration and listing. <coughs> So again, that's why we're here today. This is the second annual SBIA Ready Drug Registration Listing Workshop. For last year's was so uh, successful, we thought, hey, let's do it again. And sure enough, I think the word got out there. We, we have a lot more registrants this year, both in person and online. So um, I hope that trend continues. And, and at least we're, be, we're able to do this uh, uh, for several years to come, at least. Um, uh, in addition to offering stuff uh, like a workshop like this, we have all kinds of help available to you guys out there. We have the eDuralist help desk, which I've already mentioned today. We have a web page where hopefully we can answer most of your questions. And for any of you who might be new to this whole arena, I would recommend the eDuralist web page is a great place to start to see, uh, uh, to get all the information uh, you need. Um, we have Cedar Direct, which you will see a lot of today. We developed that application in about 2014, I think it was launched. And uh, it's become a big hit. It is now the source of more than half of all the registration and listing submissions now. So we're, uh, we're very proud of that accomplishment. Um, we've always published the NDC directory, but now it's published daily. It's an automated system. It's a great resource for you guys to check your own data to make sure things have gone through. It's a great resource for, um, uh, for everybody, for, for companies to check up on each other, honestly. Um, and it's new and improved, and it's improving all the time. We're, we're constantly looking for ways to make that data more useful uh, to you guys out in industry. So if you, again, my little plug, if you have any suggestions or requests, let us know. We can't guarantee everything will get in there, but um, we'd certainly like to know how to make it more useful. Uh, we also have the Drug Establishment Current Registration Site, or DECRS, if you're really cool in the government and pronounce all your acronyms. Um, that's the NDC directory equivalent of the uh, registration data. So you can find all currently registered facilities out there, and, and we that, will, in fact, will be expanding soon. And uh, our, our latest accomplishment is the new eDuralist toolkit. And I happen to have a copy right here. I'll do my little, uh, my little uh, prices right model thing here. 
Um, uh, this is for those of you who are here. If you haven't gotten a copy already, we have uh, plenty of printed copies out in the in the hallway there. Um, and for those of you online, you can access this online. And in fact, uh, even if you take a printed copy, those of you here, I highly recommend using the online or at least uh, referring to that uh, often. Don't keep this for too long because, as you can see throughout the uh, throughout the uh, document, there's a lot of links in here. And of course, printed links don't help you. You can't point and click on paper. Um, but those links in there, it's a wonderful centralized place for all the basics and even a little bit of beyond the basics as far as registration and listing. Goes. And then, oh, so there you go. I, uh, brief description of the toolkit. You've got the instructions and explanations um, of the entire process. It's even got a glossary of terms and some of the acronyms that we use almost uh, as, as a second language here. So if you're ever wondering what, what the heck that word was or what that acronym is, uh, you'll find it in there. You get some helpful hints and troubleshooting tips. As I said, got plenty of links in there. And not just to Durla stuff. There's links to SPL resources. Um, there's links to Cedar Direct resources and such. And of course, all the different help desks that FDA offers for this whole process. Um, We've got a, a bunch of new things coming down the pike that are either have come down the pike or are coming. Uh, you'll hear about NDC reservation today and listing certification that actually started last year, but we're really uh, putting the push on today. Um, you'll hear about a lot of the latest validations and things that you need to look out for for your submissions. Not, not just the new ones coming in, but how to go, you know, things you should think about when you go back over all the old stuff and you're updating. Uh, the older submissions because things are changing and we're validating for a lot more stuff now than we did even just two or three years ago. And of course we've got a lot of wonderful uh, nice enhancements to Cedar Direct and before I get into that I, um, I realized this morning that in my slide I didn't put arguably the most important event coming up beyond this one. Um, in November we've announced a public meeting uh, held just up the road at the FDA headquarters in White Oak in our great room um, about the expand, the potential, I should say, the potential expansion of the NDC number. Um, as many of you are probably aware, as we assign our labeler codes, we are rapidly approaching uh, uh, the number 100,000, which means the FDA will roll over to its own version of an 11-digit NDC, which will be different from the 11-digit version that many of you all are familiar with and have to use with HIPAA transactions and CMS and all that. Um, and as much chaos as go, goes on now with the two different versions, imagine what happens when the FDA now has five different formats of, of FDA across two, of uh, the FDA NDC code across two different lengths. And, and then whatever uh, the, the HIPAA world will, will do with the, their version of the 11-digit. So, Anyway, we have a big public meeting. We, we have some ideas, but we don't have any plans yet. Um, and we want to hear from the general public. Um, we want to hear from industry. We want to hear from the payer sector. We want to hear from the consultants. A lot of you all are consultants here in the room. Um, we need to know how it's, how it's used, you know, what are your processes, and, and how long and how much money will it take to change if a change comes. So. Please mark that on your calendars November 5th, right back here in Maryland, but just up the road at, at the FDA headquarters. Okay, and uh, I don't know if you get any CE credits for my keynote <laughs> speech, but um, today's learning objectives, you know, we want you to describe the drug establishment registration listing requirements. You know, we want, if you're not already familiar, we want you to uh, be aware um, and, and to be able to describe the basics. We, we want you to know all the available tools through FDA um, that we offer to submit, even though there's plenty of them out there in the real world. Uh, list all the required data uh, for the establishment registration and all the required data for the listing. And finally, just as my time is up, maybe a little late, um, thanks to all, again, our registrants here in person and everybody online. Um, Hope you find today useful and, and worth your time. And 
again, we, uh, we will make every effort to make it worth your time. With that, I'd like to call up Commander Ray Ford for the next presentation. Thank you.